Hey guys, and welcome back to Signalis. When we last left off, we were uh, getting the last plate, actually, which means that we need to go all the way back to the morgue area, if memory serves. I just need to remember how we actually got to the morgue. Ah, right, it was... Yeah, it was like back here somewhere, wasn't it? Back through the bath area. Uh, that doesn't look right. Ah, here we are. This is it. Now, was it back all the way? Nope, that's literally where we started this level. It's a little bit awkward. Ah. Uh, uh, Small cup filled with sand for placing offerings. Ah, uh, oh, right, shit. Okay, we need the incense for this, don't we? Yep, and we don't have the incense. God damn it. Ugh. Now, obviously, um, I would have to forget something, wouldn't I? Because otherwise, it just wouldn't be one of my videos now, would it? So let's go... Ah, shit on a shovel. You know what, love? Piss off. Yeah, get out of here. Nobody cares about you. Uh-oh. Nope, she's still chilling. That's fine. Right, that's the dreamer. We don't need to talk to the dreamer. We need to just go into here and grab the incense. Now, one thing. Is this incense actually lit, I wonder? I mean, it kind of looks like if you examine it, that it is lit, but that's kind of odd. Yeah. A thin, long bamboo stick covered in a layer of aromatic paste for use in religious rituals. The glowing ember at the tip emits a fragrant smoke. Yeah. Which is fine. But that's kind of strange. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Let's go. Or, you know, through the actual door would be great. Nah. No. Right. Now, as much fun as it was murdering you ladies, I must lead you to your leave you to your eternal slumber. Whilst I go and do the Lord's work or something. Right. Okay. Let's use the incense, and that gives us our final plate, the plate of love. And with that we can return to the door the holy door well I mean it's not really a holy door uh, it's a door <laughs> but it's not really the holiest of doors so let's go back not really sure which is the most efficient way up probably that's the dreamer Stop going into the dreamer's room. You know, most of this would be um, easy to get by if I just had a map. Now, I am going to save it. Just because, well, you know. Um, let's have a look. Let's grab some more bullets. Wow. Still got a lot of bullets. Um, save it there, yeah. It's like the furthest one back, so that'll do, Donkey. That'll do. Alright. Now we have our two final plates. Now, 
So let's stick the plate of love in and the plate of knowledge. And well, isn't this rather gribbly? Well, I guess the only thing we can do now is climb up. It's impossible to move on. I have been here so many times, but I have never returned. The commander never spoke about what she saw out there. I'm sure whatever it was, it was what made her fall sick. Something about her changed when she returned. She was no longer our beloved leader, Falk. What waits beyond the threshold? It doesn't matter. Beyond the gate, emptiness. Who are you? waiting. For you, Esther. For us. afraid. Remember our promise. <laughs> Looks like she's made it back to the primrose. Wake up. <laughs> Come back to where we started. <laughs> Oof. And that's the end. Or, so many people thought. There's a lot of people that played through this game that I've noticed on the forums. 
that thought this was where the game ended. But no, there is more to it. So, essentially, what was through that um, door that we walked through at the end was, for, uh, at least as far as I can understand, that was something that they found in the mines, and whenever people went through there, they came back changed and not right. Even says end there. Um, and I think that's what kind of brought the disease or whatever it was back. And then we got the uh, achievement there. Fail. Um, but also, apparently going through that door created a time loop that's constantly happening. Notice as we went through there, we ended up back where we began. And where Adler was saying, no matter what happens, like no matter how many times you go through there, it's, you know, it's always the same. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, he's kind of alluding to that. But that is uh, not where the game ends. No, because what you have to do, you have to push the start button and you can see she's looking pretty fucked up and you have to click begin and it'll be like you're just starting a new game but you're not wake up So essentially, we've made it back inside, and we've woken up again, where we started, where we began. Interesting. So let's continue, let's start exploring the ship again, back on the primrose. Cargo hold, unpressurized, do not enter during flight. Cargo hold on pressurized, do not enter during flight. Nice little fan going on. This looks cozy. The doodle of a, a colibri. Colibri. Operation Penrose. So our friend uh, actually joined, I mean, we know our friend joined the Penrose program um, because she was being bullied, and we kind of saw that in a flashback, but again, this game isn't really very clear. <laughs> um, it's only by reading a lot of this stuff up that I've, you know, kind of pieced things together. Um, there's a lot of things that are just theories, but... So what we can understand is our friend was getting heavily bullied at the academy, so she joined up to be part of Operation Penrose, which means her job was essentially to board this ship with you. I guess you were built, produced to be her co-pilot or whatever. Um, and she was sent off to find inhabitable worlds. However, you crashed on this particular world. Operation Penrose, pride of the Eurasian nation, space vessel type Penrose, People's Navy. Now, also, this uh, faction that we're part of, the uh, Eurasian nation or whatever, uh, they're locked in combat with a big empire. And uh, it's not really clear who's winning or what's going on, blah, blah, blah. But apparently, according to some of the stuff that I've read up on and found out, the Empire, uh, these guys are kind of losing. Um, uh, that's why they use so many replicants um, as soldiers and as um, labor, should we say. Uh, it's not clear whether the Empire also uses replicants and things you probably could say they probably do but anyway we never really find out much about that anyway it's all very weird and strange 
the stern observation window. Nothing to see but stars. Okay. Keep exploring. Right, so... Nope, we didn't want to go back through there. But at least we start off where the Penrose is actually flying around space. It's on its way to its fated journey. The lower deck heating system has been acting up a bit lately. I don't need to fix this right now. Okay, as long as there's no immediate danger to everybody freezing. So, scheduled maintenance checklist. Inspect LST replica calibration and storage unit. Yes, that's done. Inspect mainframe access terminal, Messel. Inspect flight controls, flight deck. Inspect coolant injector pipes, reactor. Inspect emergency cryogenic hibernation unit, cryogenics. Report to guest out scout officer, who's our friend. Okay, so let's start doing some things. Notice the chamber is empty. The emergency cryogenic hibernation unit. In case of a medical, a medical emergency that cannot be treated on board, gust out crew members can be put in hibernation here. All systems normal. I hope we never need to use this. Yeah. Check all systems normal. Nominal. Alright, well, that's all good. I wonder if... Ah, right, that actually does get updated. It's kind of interesting as we go along. Alright, cool. So that's that done. I should finish my maintenance check round before I go see Eileen. What's her name? Aran. Oh, okay. Aran. Or Irene. Not really sure what her name is. Keep skipping it too quickly. <laughs> right, the reactor's coolant injection system. No leak detected good so we are just like the maintenance droid essentially I mean we're more than that but essentially that's what our job is Penrose emergency procedures appendix H based on data from previous long journey survey missions salvaging the replica technicians for sustenance is not recommended even in extreme circumstances, replica biocomponents can cause various health problems when ingested. It may look and taste like ordinary flesh, but bioengineered tissue may cause more harm than good when eaten in an emergency situation. Oxidant may look like blood, but it is indigestible to gestalts. Okay, so apparently we actually look like... Okay, so the replicants actually have organs and things they kind of look normal but they're just they're like organic machines basically grown in labs i suppose that's interesting it should also be considered that pioneer replicas statistically have a 860 percent greater survivability than guest out pioneer officers for the sake of a successful mission keeping the replica operational rather than prolonging your own suffering may be preferable yeah i can get the logic to that penrose briefing phase two by our calculations 1500 cycles of mission time will have passed when you receive this message congratulations comrade by now you should have become fully uh, acclimatized to your new life on board your ship as you approach the Oort cloud your search for new worlds will begin utilizing the long-range sensors you will scout for viable uh, valuable resources inhabitable worlds or signs of alien life remember to rely on your replica to assist you in maintaining your vessel we all wish you great success in your mission end of decrypted transmission ah oh, there's so much like cool interesting sci-fi stuff here it's just kind of got a horror game wrapped around it definitely would like to see more um horus i i'd like to see more of this universe but i don't think we will there's the penrose 512 so A. Yeong, Gestalt pilot, she's active. 
uh, and the Elster 512 replica unit active. Remember to obey regulations at all times. So status in transit, location on course. Scout vehicle, yep. Everybody is alive and happy. Good. It's a small house plant. There's a sealed envelope amongst some documents. It says classified replica information for guest style officer eyes only. Now this is quite uh, talked about in the forums. Um, this classified replica information letter. It's unopened. I'm not allowed to open this envelope. It probably contains some classified information about me. Now we can choose to open it or not. Nobody seems to know if this has an effect on anything. But let's open it. Alistair. Replica known issues. Penrose program. Guest out officers eyes only. Previous experience with this replica model has given us insight into irregularities in their behavior that stem from the original neural pattern used for this unit. Due to the sensitive nature of this information, this document should be destroyed after reading. Alistair units were chosen for the Penrose program for their adaptability and reliability under long-term isolation conditions. Stotic and reserved Elsa units have a relatively stable neural pattern. It is best for you to leave it alone and interact with the Elsta unit as little as possible. Elster's neural pattern was a soldier of a Venton origin, so there needs a basic. Avoid talking to the Elsta unit about the war. Penrose vessels are fitted with a special calibration pod which may help with a persona with persona stabilization. To avoid resurfacing of Gestalt memories, do not show or give the Elster unit photographs, especially of soldiers during the war. Do not show Elster units movies or let them listen to music. Do not try to befriend the Elster unit. I guess they she did <laughs> befriend her? I don't know. Uh, chronometer adjustment. Technical service record. Scout officer Yeong Arlene. Uh, officer's notes. I have adjusted the ship's internal clock to run slightly slower. By my calculations, each cycle should be exactly 6.13% longer, simulating what I believe is the length of a day on uh, uh, Vinter. I wonder if Elster will notice the difference. Judging from her accent, I'm sure she's Benton. She pronounces ship just like... Ah. Issa. And Airy used to. It's very cute. Hearing her speak makes me dream of the ocean. I wonder if I'll ever get to visit something like it. Maybe on a distant world. Ah, interesting. That's a nice little bit of flavour text. <clears throat> Painting um, Ariane has been working on recently. A serene coastline. Ariane's notes. Running out of uh, ochre paint. Elsa laughed when I told her. Now I have to mix it myself. So annoying. I still haven't read a whole bunch of those manuals. Feels like they gave me enough to read for the rest of my life. Most of them are boring technical manuals anyway. They could have given us more films to watch instead. Half of them are war films, which Esther doesn't like. And the other half are uh, kitschy propaganda dramas. <laughs> yeah. Mm, that tells you uh, a lot about this kind of atmosphere, doesn't it? Lots of propaganda. Is the cockpit. Everything in order here. The ship's control panel. All systems nominal. Okay. It looks like we're just hurtling through space. Yeah, this would be like an incredibly lonely, depressing mission, wouldn't it? 
it's locked and requires a key no matter uh, so where are we so we've done everything we just need to report to the officer just need to report to Ariane and I forget where it said she was through there I guess Esther oh she's giving us a hug it's very friendly you're up oh, I guess they're kissing okay I think she's obviously got very lonely and made special friends with her android friend I missed you I missed you too Ah, it's our 3,000 3, cycle anniversary. I don't know whether that means 3,000 days or what. That's 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 a long time. That's like 10 years. Or more, about 7 years, I suppose. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, it's a few. Well, we'll be getting uh, the updated mission parameters later. So I thought it would be nice to celebrate. Wait. Let me put on some music. Oh, that's pretty cute. Remember our promise. So that was Esther kind of having a dream there, remembering all the stuff that happened before. Alright, so we're in a really freaking bad way. We've just woken up, we tore our arm off trying to get back into this uh, Penrose ship. Oh god, really in a bad way. Lost another tooth. There was so much blood, my hands were shaking. Why is my hair falling out? I can't sleep. I just want to sleep. Please let me sleep. That was written by uh, Ariane, I guess. There's a reason she's uh, falling apart. Ooh. I made a promise. I'll do anything. So we're repairing ourselves. Compartmentalizing trauma. Oh, that's interesting. Diagnostic system for the cryogenic capsule. I've taken what I needed. So we found another um, Esther unit to patch ourselves up. 
Alright, see that body armor and everything that we've repaired? We actually had like a skeleton and everything underneath that. Oof, that's pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Um, do we actually have a map? No. We don't have any kind of inventory at all. So that's where we came in. Smeared diary page. Cycle or something. Tell whether to wake or sleep anymore. Vision is blurry and my fingers hurt. My back, something hurts. My teeth hurt. Eyes hurt. Everything hurts. All of the time. I can't go on. Please make it stop. Yeah. Yeah, our, f our friend was in a really bad way. Unfortunately. And that's the pod. Yep. I guess there's nothing else in here that we can really play with. There's a huge mass of flesh in the cryopod. Not great. Not great at all. Well, I've only got one choice, and that's to go down. Can't stop now. Keep going. Yes. Let's go. And we're back on that beach. Right, let's see what we've got. Those who sing the same song have heard it in their dreams, a dark tone at the edge of hearing, a silent voice whispering to my heart. Come to us. Together we will be eternal. There is no escape. We will be one. But I fear the dark sea that will swallow me. Something old, far older than humanity, sleeps deep below the ground. Those of us who can hear its call in the night, an invitation. An ocean of memories where I ends and we begin. <gasps> Sounds like the necrophage. Or was it necromorphs? Necromorphs, isn't it? Yes. Great holes secretly are dig are digged where Earth's pores ought to suf uh, suffice, and things have learnt to walk that ought to crawl. We should never have left the primordial soup. Only through death can I escape the call of the one who rules above all life. Interesting. So humanity has opened something. I guess that's that doorway they found. And there's the boat. What have we got here? Kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Lots of kill me's. This is just a lovely beach of death. Oh. Nope, we can't go any further over there. Can we get on the boat, maybe? Kind of looks like there's something out there. Return. So here we are. Back to Rockford. What was it? Rockfront. Or oh, Rockfront, I believe it's called. Oh, this looks rough. We still don't have anything. Welcome to S23 Serplinski. You have been selected or have elected. Yep. That's basically all the same as we had before. Ooh, look at all this flesh just 
bubbling out everywhere. Okay, I guess there's only one way to go. Still to have any equipment on us whatsoever. Aha! And look at that. All of our stuff is back just where we left it. Service request form F29. Date of filing service request form something. Yeah, these are all the same things that we've seen before. They're just corrupted. Which uh, is interesting. It's like our memory banks are corrupted. Uh, where can we save? Yeah, probably there. So our memory banks are completely corrupted and we seem to be going back through old memories. But things are definitely a little bit more unstable than they were. So, I'm going to leave this one here guys. Thank you very much for watching. This is going to be probably a bit of a longer episode actually. Um, yeah, 36 minutes, wow. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave it here. When we come back, we're going to continue. And I don't really think... There's a humongous amount left of the game. But I'm sure we will uh, find out together very soon. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, until next time.